Suddenly, it seems everyone is talking about artificial intelligence. And one of its most talked about advances is AI's ability to write almost anything, from a recipe to a last minute report for your college class. We ask David Pogue if AI gets passing marks. I'm about to give you a software demo that I bet you'll never forget. It's artificial intelligence that writes for you, any kind of writing you like. Write a limerick about the effect of artificial intelligence on humanity. There once was AI so grand, it could help us with tasks at hand. But it also might do harm if its actions lack charm, so we must use it with care and command. Now, I didn't want you to have to read a bunch of text off the screen, so I've asked voice artist Keaton Talmadge to read ChatGPT's examples for us. Hey, Keaton. Hi. Thanks so much for doing this. Of course. Ready for the next one? Let's do it. Okay, let's try this. Tell the Goldilocks story in the style of the King James Bible. And it came to pass in those days that a certain young damsel named Goldilocks did wander into the dwelling of three bears who were away from their home. It's called ChatGPT, which is just about the clunkiest name ever. Oh, want to know what it stands for? Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Well, that's helpful. Point is, ChatGPT can write anything. Letters, song lyrics, research papers, recipes, therapy sessions, poems, essays, outlines, even software code. Within five days, over a million people were using this thing. Then Microsoft announced it would build it right into Microsoft Word. And then the first books written by ChatGPT have already been published. Well, self-published by people. I think this is huge. I wouldn't be surprised 50 years from now people look back and say, wow, that was a really seminal set of inventions that happened in the early 2020s. Eric Brynjolfsson is a Stanford professor and director of Stanford's Digital Economy Lab. Most of the U.S. economy is knowledge and information work, and that's who's going to be most squarely affected by this. I would put people like uh, lawyers right at the top of the list, obviously a lot of copywriters, um, screenwriters. But I like to use the word affected, not replaced, because I think if done right, it's not going to be AI replacing lawyers. It's going to be lawyers working with AI replacing lawyers who don't work with AI. <laughs> but not everyone is delighted. There's this thing called ChatGPT. Heard of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been under a rock, so yeah, no, no, no idea. So confused. Timnit Gebru is an AI researcher specializing in the ethics of AI. I think that we should be really terrified of, 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 of this whole thing. ChatGPT learned how to write by examining millions of pieces of writing on the internet. Unfortunately, believe it or not, not everything on the internet is true. It wasn't taught to understand what is fact, what is fiction, or anything like that. It'll just sort of parrot back what, I, what was on the internet. And sure enough, it sometimes spits out writing that sounds authoritative and confident, but is completely bogus. The first woman president of the United States, Hillary Rodham Clinton, served as the 45th president of the United States from January 20th, 2017, to January 20th, 2025. And then there's the problem of deliberate misinformation. Experts worry that people will use ChatGPT to flood social media with phony articles that sound professional, or bury Congress with grassroots letters that sound authentic. We should understand the harms before we proliferate something everywhere uh, and mitigate those risks before we put something like this out there. But nobody may be more distressed than teachers. Here is why. Write an English class essay about race in To Kill a Mockingbird. In Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, the theme of race is heavily present throughout the novel. The story takes place in Maycomb, Alabama during the 1930s. Some students are already using ChatGPT to cheat. Check this out, check this out. Sabi ko dito, write me a 500 word essay proving that the earth is not flat. No wonder ChatGPT has been called the end of high school English, the end of the college essay, and the return of the handwritten in-class essay. You don't need to know structure or syntax or vocabulary or grammar or spelling. The piece I also worry about, though, is the piece about thinking. Jane Rosenzweig is the director of the Writing Center at Harvard. 
when we teach writing, we're teaching people to explore an idea, to understand what other people have said about that idea, and to figure out what they think about it. A machine can do the part where it puts ideas on paper, but it can't do the part where it puts your ideas on paper. The Seattle and New York City school systems have banned ChatGPT. So have some colleges. The idea that we would ban it is up against something bigger than all of us, which is it's soon going to be everywhere. It's going to be in word processing programs. It's going to be on every machine. Some educators are trying to figure out how to work with ChatGPT to let it generate the first draft. Students will stop being writers and they will become editors. My initial reaction to that was, are we doing this because ChatGPT exists? Or are we doing this because it's better than other things that we've already done? OpenAI declined our requests for an interview, but offered a statement. We don't want ChatGPT to be used for misleading purposes in schools or anywhere else. Our policy states that when sharing content, all users should clearly indicate that it is generated by AI in a way no one could reasonably miss or misunderstand. And we're already developing a tool to help anyone identify text generated by ChatGPT. They're talking about an algorithmic watermark, an invisible flag embedded in the writing that can identify its source. There are ChatGPT detectors, but they probably won't stand a chance against the upcoming new version, ChatGPT4, which has been trained on 500 times as much data. People who've seen it say it's miraculous. A very senior person who's been working on it, he, he basically described it as a phase change. You know, it's like going from water to steam. It's just a whole nother level of, of ability. Like it or not, AI writing is here for good. Stanford's Eric Brynjolfsson um, suggests I, just, that we I'll embrace it. I think we're going to have potentially the best decade of flourishing of creativity that we've ever had because a whole bunch of people, lots more people than before, are going to be able to contribute to our collective art and science. But maybe we should let ChatGPT have the final word. I worry about ChatGPT's effects on education, misinformation, and jobs. ChatGPT is a tool that can be used for a variety of purposes, both positive and negative. It is important for society as a whole to have ongoing conversations about the responsible development and deployment of AI technology. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have any other questions or concerns, feel free to ask.